Norfolk's goal really is to um, scale battery production and to enable transition to sustainable practices in, in automotive and grid. Uh, I mean, those are the two, two largest markets. We also have industrial customers who are really great, but if you look at where the volume is coming from, it's from those, those segments. Uh, and if we're not successful and others like us are not successful in scaling this production, we could speed bump this transition. Uh, and so there is a, there is a, I think an environmental or social imperative behind what we're trying to do that uh, we need to scale production far beyond what we have currently announced uh, to be able to meet the demand that's coming in the next 10 years. And so what that means is that Northvolt needs to become uh, not just a battery manufacturer, but a manufacturer of battery factories. We need to build battery factories very, very fast and capacity very, very fast. And so that has a bunch of dimensions. Uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about that uh, in my team. Uh, my team uh, is responsible for IT, software engineering, uh, manufacturing engineering. Um, uh, and uh, uh, you know we do that in a variety of ways, but one really hard problem that we have to solve is each one of these factories, the way you build a battery factory right now, you operate a battery factory, you need a lot of people. Uh, it's a very fairly manual process because operators are involved in a lot of the tasks, and the tasks that those operators are involved in are quite complicated. And this makes it pretty hard to scale production because you need to train a lot of people every time you bring up new lines. So we really spend a lot of time thinking about how do we simplify the process of producing a battery so that we can bring those experts back into a central location and leverage them over many multiples of lines uh, and uh, make the people who are still on the factory floor make their jobs really easy so they're easy to train um, and uh, they can be really efficient. And there's some key technology enablers for that. Uh, so, um, and they sound very simple uh, and they are actually somewhat simple on their own but no one's bringing these together. Uh, they're mostly the things on, on the screen here. I would say if you had to really boil these things down, uh, it's about knowing where people are inside of a facility, being able to push communication to them and getting acknowledgement about that communication. Uh, and the technology that, that you guys have built is really um, extremely good at doing those things. Uh, and it's not that there's no other technology that can do that. There's tons of indoor positioning companies, but they don't have access control. Uh, there's tons of access control companies, but they don't let you do two-way communication. So the fact that sort of these functions that are somewhat elemental are all in one platform, and also that platform is not delivered by some company that uh, you know is running on technology that was built 20 years ago and really hard to integrate, means that uh, you know we want to we want to work uh, together to see if we can we can use this really deeply in the factories. So the plan is uh, to start with a simple um, pilot, which leverages uh, as much of the technology that's have on the plate right now. So it's probably uh, an access control play into stations, so you can log into machines line side uh, to the HMI, and that's a that's actually it sounds a sim like a simple problem. It's a hard one that's being solved in 50 different uh, ways on the common factory floor, uh, and this can help us kind of commonize that. And that gives us a good excuse about you know deploy if we can make that work, we can start deploying this into um, into users and start getting our money's worth out of the platform. But then the, the real value is when these other sort of functionality come on. Uh, because if I start to know where my people are inside of a factory, I can push the right people the right instructions at the right time. I can make sure that uh, people are not in unsafe areas uh, or that they are going to the places that uh, you know are safe in, in the event of a problem. Uh, I can know where my people spend their time and, and why tack time on a specific pro problem is long. I can do stuff like time management, clock in, clock out automatically. So these are sort of functionality that, that uh, gets layered on uh, as the platform gets better. Uh, and so for us, you know, the, nothing in here is something that, that, that I couldn't go out to the market and find a player who would do just that one thing. But it's not worth it for me to do that because that's a decent amount of work for me to do. And it only solves one piece of the problem. You really need to solve kind of all of those elemental things. And there's not really, there's no one doing that right now. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I think that what excites me about the long-term play for this is it's, it's about wearables and you know connecting people and, and staff generally. And that's, I think eventually, you know, we need to figure out once, once uh, the average operator is wearing an uh, AR headsets, you know, to work and, and uh, you know, earbuds that are Bluetooth connected, giving them, you know, guidance in their ears and stuff like that. Those are technologies that are coming that in way, in certain ways are available in, a, in kind of a, uh, an initial way right now. 
But what's not there is a platform to link those things together in a way that's sane and that's easy to manage. And so I think if you if 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 Turnpike plays the cards right, you guys are that platform, or at least one of the major ones of that. Uh, so it becomes less about the band, which is it is an exciting piece of technology, but more about the platform. And for me, that's that's what's really interesting. You know, that's uh, yeah. good. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs>